Hi, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate 5 demo for the piece I call Totes Jelly. So I did this as a new Draw This In Your Style. Some people had recently asked if I was going to do a new one, and I love doing these, but I like to space them out. I don't like doing too many. And then I realized that the last one was actually a bit ago. So I thought, okay, let's go ahead and do one. Um, so this here is the final piece. Let's go ahead and jump into the time lapse. This was also the last piece I did with my previous iPad Pro. I did recently get the newest one, which I'm super excited about. I actually skipped the previous sort of upgrade, which I had not done yet with the iPad Pro. I mean, there was only this is only the fourth one to come out, but it was just uh, it was a hard decision. But I decided to skip it because I just thought it made more sense for some reason. Um, and so uh, this is the last one I did on the previous iPad. However, I'm recording this on the new iPad, so hopefully all of the sound stuff will work out fine. I mean, as fine as it normally does, this isn't exactly high budget stuff. Now, what did I want to do for this piece? I had done a rough of a dude who had a jelly head because uh, I saw this guy on a rooftop from where I work. I saw him on a rooftop walking past this orange wall and I was looking at his shadow cast across it and I thought to myself, that'd be funny if he had like a translucent head. And I don't know why I thought that it was, it was just a weird idea. But then I did this like sketch of this uh, blue headed guy. And I just thought this was kind of a fun idea in general, but then I just didn't really feel like finishing it or taking it further or anything like that. So I thought, let's bring it back and do that with a draw this in your style of uh, this girl here. I just thought it'd be kind of more fun and the jelly thing, you know, since it's, it was just the head before, I can do the whole body but not have to draw the whole body. So that's kind of where the whole thing came from. And I thought with me recently doing the transparent ghost in a demo, I thought it might be kind of fun to just do like another see-through type thing and uh, see if anybody wants to throw down on that because it'd be kind of fun. So as you see the sketch finishing here, the sketch is, is fairly simple. Uh, the whole joke or the whole novelty of it is she's got this sucker in her mouth and if her face is clear, you can see it. And then I was like, well, if her face is clear, let's also have, see the like ponytail in the background and the back of her shirt. That's the whole reason she's wearing a tank top so that we can see the cut of the back of her shirt. And then you can see here as I go through these flats, you can see how this is structured. Now I will go through the file so that you can see the file. I think it's important on this one to see how it was all set up ultimately. Um, but what we've got is a flat for the face, but then we've got the flat for the body, which is what you're seeing get put in right there, is also the back of the head. And it'll all be part of the same flat. So like the head and the body, so you can see right there because the body's off right now, it's the same so that they are layered because I know that we're gonna want extra emphasis on the face so that that's not too see-through all the way to the back. It's kind of like the way they did it in Casper, the live action Casper, where they have like that white um, on their faces to make sure that part of it stays solid. It's a similar thing to that where I wanted to make sure that the, the face didn't get lost in too much transparency. In fact, clarity is the main struggle with this piece. Making something look transparent is not very hard. Making all of these elements look transparent enough but not have everything be like so see-through that you just can't read anything, that's the harder thing to try and balance. So now we're putting in the front part of the tank top because that's the part that I've got drawn, so I figure I'll flap that first and I'll use that as the base to figure out the like back scoop of the, of the neckline of the tank top. So here we just flat this in. Now some of these colors I think slightly change as I go through it, but uh, nothing too big. For the most part she remains uh, this sort of like magenta. My slipper just flew off if you heard that smacking sound in the background. Um, she stays basically magenta, but then her tank top goes a little bit more blue just to kind of bring it all in. Um, you know, there's a certain amount of risk when you're doing lots of things in an image or you're doing too few things. It's like how crazy do you want to get and I think that you know there's no hard and fast rule with this obviously um, like for instance you can have some insane super noisy piece of art and that's what you're going for and that's fine but in this case because I've already got these transparencies and she's crazy colors it's like okay I gotta reduce some things so 
We try to reduce the intensity of the color palette a little bit by having, instead of the shirt going so green, having it go blue. So we're pulling it closer to that magenta. So we actually get a fairly analogous color scheme throughout this entire thing. We've got the hair, the skin, and the shirt theoretically just slightly separated on the on the color scheme, or excuse me, on the uh, color wheel. They're just slightly separated. The eyes actually take the biggest leap, but they're not even that far away if you're really looking at it. We, we sort of stay like analogous all the way around, but, but anyways, here we're putting in the eyelashes. I decided to not make the eyelashes transparent in any way, uh, just keep those, you know, solid. We gotta have some sort of anchor, and why not have the anchor be the thing that frames the eyes? You can see here that I've got the eyeballs as literal balls. They're just, uh, well, they're circles. When they get rendered, they'll turn into spheres, um, and th that way we can just see them floating in there. I even toy with, and that might show up somewhere here. At one point I mentioned to my wife the idea of actually doing like a whole skeleton inside there, which I think could be cool and fun, but since we're going with magenta and we're going with we're going with crazy color schemes, we're going with this more jelly kind of look, the jelly hair and everything. I didn't want it to get like so, so many things at once. It's like, oh, crazy palette and uh, jelly and you can see a skeleton, like it just becomes a few too many things and then you, uh, you're sort of spending it all in one go. And it's just a lot to read in general. So you might see me very quickly at one point, I sort of sketch in like a, uh, some, some of the spinal column and then I'm like, yeah, no, 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 this isn't gonna work. So there you can see the back of the hair getting painted in uh, and then that'll get, you know, seen basically. You can see it like through the body and everything. Uh, as this whole thing goes on, you're going to see some merging. Well, I, actually, I don't know if you'll see that part, but there will be some merging of layers happening. For the most part, I was, as economic as I could be with this piece. However, if you were keeping track of like the Choni Athul piece where it's the girl that has the see-through shirt, we did some transparency tricks there. And then the ghost, we did some transparency tricks there. And the trick is that you essentially maintain a separate lighting structure for the transparent pieces that you do for the solid pieces in, in those two examples. Here, we have to essentially come up with a lighting setup for everything. Every individual flat gets its own lighting setup which this is similar to the color picking methodology that I've mentioned in the past that I did for instance if you look at my video where I talk about my layer structure uh, the difference between my Photoshop and my procreate structure you'll see that in my Photoshop one I have these dedicated folders that contain all of the values all of the levels of paint for like an individual thing so if there's like an eyeball there's literally like an eyeball folder and then all the layers of all my color picked stuff in there, all my layers. Uh, with this, we're doing something similar. We basically have to create a folder that's like eyes. And then we have, in the eyes, we have the flats, and then we have the shadow layers for those flats, and the lighting layers for those flats. And that's the best way to try and capture each one of these see-through elements capturing the light in their own unique ways with the other layers of see-through stuff on top of them. Okay, so now we're done with the flats and we're instantly going to move into the ambient occlusion pass. Uh, we're going to do the AO, we're going to do a cast shadow, we're going to do shine, and then it starts getting a little hairy after that. Once I start deciding that I need to merge a bunch of stuff in order to get my layer count back, um, we start getting just like messier, messier in terms of structure, uh, and also more unique in terms of structure. Each individual piece might not require all of the same uh, layers in order to capture what we're looking for. So that's that's what will happen. Now I did use a warm shadow here. I use a warm shadow and a cool light, uh, which is not going to be the case in a couple pieces from now. Um, I also did a portrait of a girl the other day, a portrait of a fictitious girl, but a portrait nonetheless. Uh, and that one is going to be using a warm shadow and a warm light. Uh, it's pretty interesting and uh, you'll, we'll get to that two videos from now. So we'll have this video and then the next character in that monster lineup is next and then, and then that girl. Someone, speaking of doing a draw this in your style, somebody asked me also if I would be willing to do another thing where I post lines 
and then people color the lines. I love the idea of doing that. I have a question for you guys though. If you're paying attention at this point in the video, A, thanks for hanging out throughout the whole video. Um, and two, uh, would you guys want super clean lines that you can color? Or would you want something that's more like a sketch? Um, not like a super rough, but something that's like a, a somewhat tight sketch that you can color. Uh, because I have one that I was thinking could be fun. Um, that I would share with everybody and I'm going to do my own render of it too and I was thinking that that could be fun so please please let me know in the comments if you want to see it more like a tight line that you get to color or a rough that you get to that you get to color either one I'm willing to do but since I have that one around I thought I'll, I'll go ahead and, and ask okay so at the stage that you see right now we are you can see the tank top in the background. You can see I'm doing the AO, but the thing that I want to talk about with the tank top is it's a hard line right now. And one of the main ways that you can communicate that something is translucent instead of transparent is by blurring, basically distorting whatever is on the other side of that object. So for most of the time, that means just blurring. Uh, if something has like a ripple in it, you have to do a ripple, but we're going with just like an even blur. And that's what I eventually do here. So anything that is behind something else has to be merged with all of its lighting layers and then blurred in order to pull off the effect. And so you'll see that with the back of the tank top, you'll see that with like where the shoulder is, um, where it overlaps with the hand. And then you'll see that in uh, the ponytail as well. I can, there might be some other aspects, but I don't know. There's also some degree of bullshitting that I had to do with this transparency. This is sort of what I would call like a artistic logic transparency, which is like I'm making things as transparent as I want them to be. And it's not necessarily the most accurate thing. Like for instance, we've got that ear, her distant ear, and that doesn't really register on the transparency meter um, So there are some things that I just decide to like omit emphasizing the transparency because of either clarity or just because like I don't have the brain power to process how that head would like wrap back around to become 3D or see-through or whatever. Speaking of um, my brain power, this is a draw this in your style and you're seeing the video right now, but that doesn't mean that the draw this in your style for this is over. In fact, people are still doing them today. So I would love it if you're out there and you would like to do this, please, please go ahead and do one. It's really fun to see what everybody does with uh, your, your draw this in, the, in your style. And if you post it on Instagram, like at me in the comment, even tag me because then it goes into like a separate category and I can find it more easily. And anytime somebody does a draw this in your style, I repost it in my stories and then I make a story highlight where I collect them for each one of them. This is the fourth. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, fourth. Yeah, this is the fourth draw this in your style that I've done. And each one of them are collected in these little collections on my Instagram page. So so please, uh, if you feel like doing one, do one and make sure you tag me so that I can uh, get you highlighted uh, in, in, in stories and, and then immortalized in the story highlights. Okay, so we do jump to some soft lighting tricks a little bit sooner here than we normally do. I could render all of this jelly in like a really rough way and if I'm doing my lighting correctly and all that kind of stuff it'll still appear see-through but I wanted it to be more refined. I just wanted to make sure that the jelly thing was selling correctly and that people could pick up on it correctly. So um, we uh, that that's why you'll see that coming in. There'll be more times where I'll jump to a soft brush just to soften some stuff up a little bit, soften up some lighting uh, before I normally would. One thing that's funny is you can see there, I put like a little tag in the back of her, like a printed on tag on the back of her tank top and you don't see that at all when everything is said and done. Maybe if I had made it like an actual white tag, it would show up more, but I didn't and it just gets blurred out and gone. So little details that you don't see in the final. Here's a lovely face, you like that? So obviously turning the face layer off, working on the eyes and everything and working on the part of the sucker, the lollipop that's in the mouth. I didn't give it any type of special look. I didn't like put like a, a ring around it, like it's a blow pop or like it's a, 
Tootsie Roll Pop or something like that. I just kept it simple. Uh, part of that, I guess you could say, might have been laziness. It's also clarity. Um, both reasons are equally valid. So, so yeah, that's that's that. Now we're on the face. Um, this is the, I would say, the majority of the geometry that I'm trying to represent here. The hand is also a big part of it, but the face is, even though the hand has to be like done well, the face is obviously the focal point in her big ass eyes. So um, this is, I guess, where all the, this is where the budget goes. I'm just gonna let this roll for a bit, uh, and then when more exciting things to talk about comes on, I'll make sure I come back for that. And also, I think the bulk of this, the bulk of the like, how this was pulled off and the learnings will be in the file review, but we'll get to all of that in a minute. Now we're going to get into the direct shadow, which is going to be the same color as the other shadow uh, on a new layer. Well, actually on several new layers because we have to do it for every layer where there's a cast shadow. And now the idea here is to try and be smart. And if I don't have a cast shadow, obviously don't do it. And if I can, if there's any area where I can use the same shadow for two different pieces, I will do that. Uh, that doesn't come up much. I'm trying to think if it does or where it does, um, but there are opportunities in here to merge some stuff together and try to get away with some tricks. And the final state of that we'll see when we go over the file. So for instance, the direct shadow that's hitting the ponytail is on its own layer, which is different than the one that we just drew underneath her jawline. Um, and then you can see that there was one just then that was put into like the interior skull cap part of like the hair. 
and you can see that her hair has some transparency there. We can see the top of her head. So we're trying to make sure that all of these things where you're seeing that transparency that it, it reads okay. This was kind of hard to do though, trying to get the shadow to cast right on the eye orbs. Um, and if I had put the shadow everywhere, uh, like for instance, if I had said that the whole thing being in the head meant that those eyeballs would be like more in shadow, it would have really obscured those eyeballs. And trying to get those eyeballs to be clear was actually a pain in the butt. Um, I didn't want them to be so clear that, that that version before where her face is turned off, I didn't want that to be sort of like the main read. I wanted the eyes to be more something that you kind of notice after you've looked at it for a bit, but, um, but I still wanted you to be able to notice them. So trying to find that balance was kind of interesting. Doing some cleanup there on some of the cast shadows. In a minute, what we're gonna move to is capturing a little bit more of that transparent vibe. Uh, you'll start seeing it happen here. What we'll do is duplicate the flat layer, and then on the one that is either on top or underneath, it doesn't really matter, we will erase using like a soft eraser some of the centers of them, like where the mass is at its most spread out or its thinnest, where it's not kind of curving into the distance and overlapping with itself. Um, and then we will take that other layer that's still whole and we will adjust its opacity so that it's not completely transparent, but there is still some color there. That'll sort of create, like here you can see right there, erase away a little bit, turn on the other layer, adjust its opacity so that it's not completely see-through, and then we will use that now as our flat moving forward because we're basically done with our selections for the most part. And so we're going to go in here now and um, start merging things. And you can see there now on the hair, the hair has been blurred. I will show how that's done. Don't worry, I'll do a quick demo on that. All of that, actually. So now that is all um, done, essentially. And we'll come back to it. Uh, we'll come back to like selling that transparency in a minute. But right now that was like a way to set it up for the next stages so that we can make sure that the transparency is reading as clear as possible. Uh, right now I'm adding like some rim lighting, but it's like some generic rim lighting. It's like trying to capture the fact that this is a fairly reflective surface and it's capturing light kind of like from all directions. Uh, we also change its layer uh, property, its blend mode like several times, just trying to find like that exact right look. I knew I wanted it there, but I just didn't know exactly how I was going to capture it. So we tweak that as time goes on while we're trying to just, we're in the stage now, I should highlight that, that we're in the stage now of, we've got the AO done, we've got the direct shadow done. And now we're just trying to say like, okay, we've got the building blocks. Now let's make this feel like the material I'm trying to make it feel like. And so that's where all the effort is going right now.
what you've just been watching was me adding the light layer to everything, which is the blue that you see right there going on, um, except for the reduced opacity. And now what we're doing is another layer where we're going in and, and focusing on catching those highlights and making the shine read a little bit more strongly. Uh, it's still being smudged and still not at a hundred percent opacity anywhere. Um, but we are trying to start setting up like where that light is hitting and that she is shiny to some degree. Um, and, uh, making sure that that just looks like that's what we're going for. Second, we're going to change that tank top over to the blue I was talking about, but we also will add a little bit of the light coming through the head onto that back ponytail. We're going through and just putting bounce in anywhere we can, anywhere that it makes sense so that we can really sell uh, what this material is that she's made of. I imagine there's going to be a lot of weird flicking on and off of layers right now uh, as I'm just sort of moving through. Here's a shadow cast from the hand, but it fades off. I think I do add a little bit more of that hand. In fact, I maybe even complete it. I can't remember now. But um, yeah, here we go. Here's some bounce on the eyeballs. At one point, I considered making the eyes less saturated, um, but it just, the whole thing is supposed to be fun and obnoxious, and I thought that if I did that, it would. It would make it look like I was going for something more sophisticated than I really was. Uh, you can see there for a second that, that I, I added a little bit more um, to the eyeball to make it look like it's fading into sort of like a thicker um, pink miasma than it actually is. Or I should say that it actually was with the layers, but I mean, who's to say it isn't doing that? This is a real, a real person. Uh, here we go, now we're adding the rim light, trying to also obey some of those transparencies. Uh, this is going on top though, so we're, we're creating those transparencies by erasing, not by actually situating it behind the right layers in the stack. Because at this point, we don't really have those layers to be playing with anymore. We're gonna, um, you're gonna see a lot of uh, alteration to these rim lights too, where they're flipping through different layer um, blend modes and that they are maybe even shifting in color slightly just trying to find that balance because I actually suffer from really really liking pieces in the late middle let's call it when everything's a little bit more matte and I realize that making things more shiny is sometimes needed but I just usually don't prefer it as much so sometimes I struggle with like liking how shiny it looks but wanting it to look less shiny and all that kind of stuff so you'll see me having a lot of indecision around rim light sometimes. The thing that's really funny is this method of rim light that I happen to be doing here, and it's very similar to what I've been doing on the monster characters um, with that one rim light that comes down from the top on each one of them, is this method is almost as old as me doing like digital art, like just painting in this white highlight and then duplicating it and colorizing it and all that kind of shit. Um, I've been doing that like forever. So if you go back and you look at some of my old pieces, you'll see that a lot. And by old pieces, I mean like 15 years ago, not, not even like a couple years ago. Like I've been doing that same old gag for a really long time. Okay, I completely do not know what's happening here. Let's see, what's happening next? 
Oh, I see. We're doing some touch-ups on the hands and the nose and stuff. Got it. All rim light stuff. Trying to make sure that I'm capturing that in a way that I'm happy with, basically. Here then at the end, uh, well not the end end, but almost the end, we put a little vignetting on this really quickly. And now we move into doing some sort of like light chromatic aberration. Although I will admit I wasn't super happy with how it was coming out. Uh, if you want to know how I'm doing chromatic aberration, look at my video. Rita seems off. Something's wrong with Rita. I can't remember what it's called, but you'll find it. It's a chick who's a little wall-eyed. Um, that's where I talk about how I do it. Although I did eventually say that I, I was just like kind of unhappy with it. So I went and just did it in Photoshop, which I also talk about how to do that on a video. Um, the video where I do Gray Fox from Metal Gear Solid. Uh, what's happening right here if it's hard to tell, is I wasn't happy with some of the kind of artifacting I had around some of the edges. The brush was a little rough and just created too much uh, unrefined look that I didn't really want. And so I just went in and like hand painted it all out. Um, here we're increasing that shadow up on her shoulder. Oh, actually, this is where we're getting rid of the refinement, uh, the, the unrefined part. Man, I see, I've said this before, but I'm looking at a version of this on my screen that's like one-tenth the size of my screen. So, it, well, I shouldn't say one-tenth the size. It's like, I don't know, it's small. So it's hard for me to see all of these little changes here and there. But hopefully everything that I say will be clear when you're seeing it at full res. Or I should say, everything that I am saying will be wrong when you're seeing it at full res. And then here at the end is the chromatic aberration tweaks. And the final image right there. Let's quickly jump into the Procreate file and take a look at how this is all set up. So here is the final file. Now I will say that this is after a lot of merging has been done. So it's very much not the way that it was in a lot of stages, but let's go ahead and take a look at it anyhow. Um, first, this one we can ignore. I just use this as a selection. That's why it's kind of like an old state uh, of the image. So let's just delete that for now. This is a duplicate file, so I can just delete whatever I want. Um, here is the line layer. Just delete that for now. Okay, let's turn off all of these. Now you'll see as I'm turning them off, instead of it being like, instead of it being like the lighting, it is the entirety of a chunk of her. And that's because of the different file structure here. So this is the background. The background has now been merged with all of the color transfers and the shadow and all of that kind of, all those shenanigans. Then we have her ponytail. Her ponytail at this point is this lighting layer, this rim light, and then everything else has been merged together and blurred. Can see the blurring artifacts happening there from the selection. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then we have this, which doesn't really need any more complication to it because it's all in shadow, so that just stays there. It's, that's why it's its own layer. Then we have the body, which at this point again is similar to the other one, it's just the lighting, the rim lighting, and then the main body. And let's just go through these really quickly. Same here, except since we have the shirt, we have like a different uh, 
different things have to happen here. We've got the hand and the shirt in the same thing. This is another example of where we're trying to save where we can on layers. For instance, here. And then we go next up, which is the stuff that's like in her head as well as in her fingers right there. You can see how dramatic the contrast has to be here in order to read through the, uh, the translucent forms. Then we have this one. Now you'll notice the stick actually changes because we have a duplicate of that stick right here so that we have the version that's in the mouth and behind the finger as well as the version that is solid, that is on the outside. Then we have the hair, the front hair, which this is probably the layer that is the closest to the way it was in the middle of painting. This has the lighting, it has the rim lighting, but then it also has the multiply layer and then the see-through flats, which if we turn those all the way up, there you go, that's what they look like. And then we'll undo that, see-through. And then we have all this bullshit. There's a lot of shit happening here. So let's just quickly go through it so that you can see on a piece like this how much like has to happen kind of at the end to pull it all together. So we have a supporting shadows layer right there, which is like underside of the nose and in the ear and those finger uh, enhancements, let's call them. Then we have this darkening. I just wanted a little bit of darkening on that side of everything. We have the shine. So you can see this is all one unified layer because it would be too much to go in and add more lighting layers and everything. Here we have some extra shadows as well as all the bounces. Boom. Then we have, what are you? Oh, these are the hottest of shines. Boom, you can see them right there. Only in certain spots. This is that again, but I'm guessing blurred. This is the edging. This is, my God, I don't know. I'll be honest, oh, just some extra, so, oh, it's the, it's the support shadow for the rim light. So rim light, and then here is the bounce light from the background, lightening a bunch of things. Uh, here we're emphasizing the nostril to punch in the depth of that nostril. It's actually funny how much communicating the depth of a nostril will set up your, your values for the entire thing. Here is the paint. This is what I was talking about when I said that I didn't like the artifacting. You can see here, now this is just because I used the turpentine brush. I didn't have to. I could have used a simple, cleaner brush, but I decided not to. And then when we flip this on, you can see I just smoothed it all out. I used a nicer brush. I actually think I still use turpentine, but I just made sure it was a little bit more finished. Uh, and then we have lighting in the eyes signature and vignetting at the end. So that is everything that went into structuring this. But I think the important thing to do a quick demo of for you is the how I captured the translucency and then how I did that like blurring thing. So let's do that. All right, so here we are. Just to make sure we are communicating this um, transparency well, let's like get some general noise all around because this will help us with seeing the transparency a little bit better. I'll make the background also something. Ugh, this is ugly, <laughs> this is ugly, but whatever. We're, we're doing it to sell our transparency. I'm gonna do like I always do. I'm gonna show this with circles because it's the easiest way. Uh, and let's just keep it the same kind of like reddish pink um, jelly or, or translucent thing. So I'm gonna do it this way. We're gonna just do a circle, fill it. Um, actually, just to really sell this, let's do it with like some very different um, colors. Let's do like a, then we'll do like a purple one. So now we've got these two circles. The way that I handled the transparency 
Uh, we're gonna put a shadow on each one of these really quickly because I think it's going to help with the read um, and it'll more closely resemble how I structured everything. So group, group, set to multiply. God, that background is ugly. Set to multiply. You know what, actually, let's do this. Because I think it'll, it'll still give us what we're looking for. Fill, color, and then let's go with like, uh, yeah, sure, let's do that. And then we'll just desaturate this a bit. Okay, that's, that's better. It's easier to look at at least. Okay, so go back to this and we're gonna put this to multiply. Let's grab that shadow color that we had again. We'll set that to multiply as well. We're just gonna do this super simply. I'm just gonna put like a, it, oops, wrong one. Oh, that'll work, for it. let's just do that. So put a shadow on the underside and select a shadow on the underside. Easy. Um, now, because we have the shadows like this, we don't have to worry about the select paint, select clear method where everything gets layered on top on one shadow layer. Like we don't have a shadow layer that's like way up here that we're having to control. We have them on each layer, which is great, but in Procreate that's going to eventually become a problem because we have a layer limit. Um, but let's stick to the, um, the demo at hand. So we've got really simple shadow on each one of these. I'm going to turn this one off for a second. And I'm gonna turn this off for a second. And I'll duplicate this circle. Now let's just go with the, we'll turn off the one that's underneath it. And on that one, we will erase the middle like this. We'll make it, we'll make it, we'll do it like this. Let's just say we'll do it like this. In fact, let's, uh, let's do both of them at the same time. I think that would actually be kind of a good way of seeing this. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna erase from the middle, right? So already now we've got something that more closely resembles like a soap bubble. Uh, it still is way more opaque than a soap bubble is towards the edges, but like, let's just call it a soap bubble. But if we turn on these under layers, they, they go full and then we lower their opacity like that just enough so that we can see through. And now obviously you go to zero, super see-through, go to 100%, super opaque. If we pull it down just the right amount, then we get what we're looking for. Let's make them equally see-through. So they're both at roughly 73%. Okay, they're exactly 73%. Now we turn our shadow layers back on and we still have our shadows and because those shadows layers are multiply they take into account everything underneath they're not totally opaque now you i want to highlight that this is a way to do this there's lots of ways to do this there's also lots of different types of transparencies that you might be trying to capture so don't take this as the way to do this just take it as a way to do this um, one of the other things that I did in the other one was I did that rim light let's just do like a super basic ass rim light we'll go to white and we'll fill, then we select using that solid that we have and we clear, and then we blur it, and then we select it again. But this time we select the inverse, which is this button you see at the bottom I'm pressing, and then you clear it again, right? Clear, and you get that rim light around it that's white and it's perfectly even, so it might not be everything, it's, it might not be what you want all the time, but it's what we want right now. Um, I'm going to duplicate it just to make it a little bit more intense and I'm going to set it to an overlay. I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm not going to explain it this time. I'm just going to do it really fast so that we can get this done. Okay, duplicate, flatten, or merge I should say, and then overlay. Okay, now we've got these two semi-transparent uh, things. Uh, balls, but the last step that we did in the actual piece to make sure that this really sold well was we blurred so that we could try to communicate that there's some disruption, some distortion through that, that ball to the objects behind it. So what's the easiest way to do this? Well, the absolute easiest way is, uh, and I'm gonna duplicate this just so we don't lose anything right now, is you flatten all of this flatten and then you select this ball 
and then you go back here. So now you've selected where the ball is, but you're selecting it on the other ball, as you can see right here, because that's the layer I have selected. And you go to Gaussian Blur and you blur it. There we go, that's pretty good, maybe more. Yeah, let's go more. And now we still have that same selection. So what we're gonna do is, this is, this is some advanced techniques, are you ready? We're going to turn off this ball and this ball. We still have the same selection, but you can see that we're just on that green color layer, which isn't going to do us any good because it's just gonna be a green layer that we're working with. We're not dealing with all those layers underneath. So what you do is you come up here to the wrench, you go to add, and then you say copy canvas. And by copying canvas, you're actually copying every layer that's visible within that selection. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm gonna say paste, boop. So if I turn these off real quick, you can see that's what I've got there. Now let's turn this back on and this back on. I'm gonna um, hold selection again so that we reselect what we already had. And now I'm gonna blur this. Gaussian blur, blur. So now when we turn these off, you can see that that section is also blurred. Now, last thing we have to do, because we did that with those layers, is we have to do the same thing with the circle. So we will select, oops, sorry. We will select the original circle, select. We will turn everything off and we will do copy canvas again we will do paste canvas. Let's put it back down here. It's the best spot for it. We're gonna hold select to get that selection back. And then we're gonna blur that one now. Okay. So what we've done now is we've created a an, two orbs that have more see-through in the middle because it's not piling up on the matter that's at the edges. Uh, so it's more opaque at the edges. And then we're also blurring that which is underneath it so that we can sell how translucent these are, how much they're distorting everything that's underneath. Just so that I, I can make this as clear as possible. Fill. When I say the matter is sort of piling up on the sides, what I'm specifically referring to there is this. Think of it this way. If you have a opaque, a, sorry, a semi-transparent wall and you're just looking at the wall from this point of view. So let's say you are standing here. This is the back of your head and you were looking at that wall, you're gonna be able to see through it better than if you were, let's say, looking at it like this. If you were looking at that same wall from here and you were looking through it like that, all of that matter, you're looking at way more matter now than you were before that is piling up and, and adding to that distortion. So that's what we're trying to capture when we're doing this sphere thing, is we're trying to capture the fact that you're not just going from looking at the, the side of a see-through wall to the end of a see-through wall. You're going, you're visually seeing a gradual buildup as it goes around the surface of that ball. So the last thing we would do just to really try to like sell this is we would probably put a highlight here just so that we can communicate that form a little bit better. So I hope this was helpful in really trying to illustrate what my thought process was. Uh, it's, it's not entirely rooted in like truth or realism or science. It's more about just trying to communicate enough of what's there so that it reads well and that the, the vibe of what I'm trying to pull off uh, gets communicated. And that about wraps it up for this episode. Uh, I hope all of that was really helpful with the transparencies and the, 
just the deeper dive on how this was pulled off. And don't forget, this is a draw this in your style. So if you feel like you'd like to do one, please do, please tag me so I can make sure that I share you and uh, put you into that little story highlight thing, which is just awesome to keep around. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you on the next one. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.